Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So this is the start of my block for the month of uh, March, which was a colourful butterfly. Now I'm a little bit late because March for me has been a little bit hectic. As they say, life has been kicking me around a little bit, but um, I think things may settle now a little and allow me to get back into a creative space again. So I'm a little bit late with March, but I do have a bit of a jump start because of this um, butterfly that I actually did last year and it just hasn't found a home. So as soon as I saw the prompt was a butterfly, I thought, oh, finally, I've got um, the perfect piece. So I sort of will catch up quite quickly with this little guy. This butterfly came about because when I was doing the Anne Brooks um, 52 tags week 17 was couching which I'd never done before and um, since doing this tag I seem to be couching so much in all of my embroidery my Jessie Chorley panel that um, I'm working through as well on a series of YouTube videos I'm doing couching uh, a lot because uh, I just find it so easy, it's interesting and allows you to use all sorts of textures. So this tag was the start of it all. And Anne had us roll different fabrics and laces and trims and put them down on the tag and then couch over them using different things from beads to some uh, fly stitch, just some X's, just some random stitches and even little beads to couch down. So that's sort of the start of it all. And I was so impressed with making that tag that I had all of these little off cuts when I trimmed it, just random little pieces that were just no longer needed and to be discarded. So what I ended up doing is all of those little off cuts became the body for the bee or moth or butterfly. Well, it sort of started as a bee and then morphed into a butterfly, but, um, that was a great use of all of those little bits and pieces. And then I just added the head with all of the pearls. Um, and then to build around it, I just popped some little snippets of lace and a couple of these uh, old linen buttons, a couple petals. I had some really old lace from my grandmother's um, stash that I've got, you know, one or two of these little leaves. So I've been popping them in around on some key pieces. I seed stitched the wings and then where the floral was, I used um, embroidery cotton and just embellished the flowers with some random stitching. So it, I was really pleased with my, my little butterfly. I do think in reflection, I need to make the antenna bigger and I think I need to move them so that they start in the center of the head and then come out. So it's just been something that's been bugging me ever since I made the piece. So I'm going to use this butterfly. I had thought that one day she might end up on my red work uh, fabric journal. For those of you who haven't seen this journal, I've actually got a YouTube video in there and it's just a place whenever I do some work that is of the tones of red, I um, add them to this journal. So there's all sorts of bits and pieces in there, which I've been working on this for a little while. So I really love red work. There's some general embroidery. So it's just a great spot to keep um, anything that I make in the way of red. So I had thought, which I do mention in that video um, that I made about this book of putting my um, butterfly on the cover, but it just never happened. So I th when this prompt come about, I thought finally I have a home for my butterfly. So what I'm going to do in this video is try and work out how to make this into a layout suitable for um, the prompt of March. So I've gone through my stash of bits and pieces and I've thought what I might try and do is just use some of these random little trims that I have. Now they've come from all sorts of places and I've tried to pick ones that were completely different to each other. So they're just random shapes and then build in um, around my butterfly because I'd like to disguise the fact that he is on a or he or she is on a rectangle here 
So I need to, I think, layer a lot of uh, elements around just to sort of soften that hard edge that um, you can see. That fabric that the butterfly is on, I actually got from a pack from uh, Rachel um, Roxy Creations. It's uh, a vintage hemp. It's just beautiful, beautiful fabric. So I'll be pleased to actually incorporate this butterfly in this panel being that it's a Roxy Creations sort of challenge. So what I might do first is I need to work out my background. Um, I'm going to try and stay in the tones that I've already used, like this sandy sort of fabric, and there's some script on the two lower petals of that butterfly. So I sort of picked up this piece of lace. I've only got a little bit of it, so it's probably not going to fit. Well, it would fit there. I tend to, I might, this piece is probably a little bit smaller than the book itself. So I don't mind if it sort of hangs over a little bit and um, creates like a lacy edge for my panel. Now I found some music fabric that has some script and music on it as well. A couple pieces of that. So I thought about bringing that in because that also matches the colours of that piece of fabric in the um, butterfly wing so it's just a case of where will I put it I tend to like to frame things so I like to have a few straight lines I know uh, curves are lovely but a little bit of curves and um, straight lines mixed together tends to look really pretty but um, we'll see how we go just don't know if I should put my butterfly at an angle. It looks so dramatic when I turn it on the angle. I think I will keep it fairly square. And maybe I create really heavy lace around this side and try to keep this a little bit more uh, open and simple, like somewhere to breathe, so to speak. Allow your eye to rest. That fits there nicely. How does that fit? Oh, I think we've got something happening now. Okay. Well, that's that's actually all right. I can see the music. I can do some embroidery on that. Okay. I'm liking that. That, that was pretty simple. Now, using all of these little motifs and that, I'll just show you where I got a chunk of them from. This is a blouse that I picked up at an op shop. So it's made pretty much of tulle, a very soft tulle, and then the bottom of the blouse has this lace um, motifs, and then this random um, lace at the bottom, this embroidered piece. And it's just been the gift that keeps giving. And then even around the neckline, it had embroidered uh, lace on the tulle. It's, it's just beautiful. This thing was like $2.50 at an op shop and I've used it and used it and used it so I have cut some pieces from it this was a little one that was on the side near the arm and most of it was incorporated into the seam so there was only a little bit of that where it actually comes from I'll just show you the medallion that's the medallion and it was just a little bit that sort of worked into the seam of this little blouse so I thought that would be a good little piece I've then just chopped a piece of that off it's sort of quite textual that's up in the main part of the tulle it sort of had the side seam there so I've cut the side seam off so I've got that as well then um, I have a couple pieces of curtain fabric that's one of them so I spotted this little piece here so I've chop that out of there some great shapes in there plus some nice um, uh, I don't look I don't even know what that's called it's a rayon I'd say see-through fabric great for laying over things to create texture so I grabbed that and that gave me quite a random piece this one now where's the this was also off of a curtain and it had these medallions in it which I thought were quite unique. So I've cut two of those out, different shape again from that little snippet. 
So as you can see, I've just grabbed some random shapes, tried to make them all different. And um, then I had a couple scraps of this lace left, two little bits. I don't know if we'll use it or not. And then I just sort of had some snippets of the tulle from that little blouse as well. So I thought maybe they might be useful. So I guess now what I'm going to try and do is try and soften the lines so that it's not as obvious that this little guy is on a, um, a rectangular shape. So it's just a case now of having a play around and trying to bring the pieces up onto, onto the butterfly panel to sort of soften soften everything so just bear with me as I have a bit of a fiddle I like it sort of just to blend but then you sort of need your eye to still notice that there is a different color and texture so I'm just sort of gonna layer I love that what a great shape and design. Um, I'm thinking that doesn't look too bad. Maybe that there. So trying to hide the fact that there is a sharp visible line there. Keeping everything quite fluid and random. Don't mind having a little bit of space here and there but Um, up there, I wonder if I go more of a long, long way, this little guy. Oh, I keep wanting to come back over this side. Yeah, I'm sort of liking, liking that. Everything busy, lacy motif is happening this side and it sort of allows then this lace that I've already stitched into position to sort of blend as well as if it's all connected. Might just need to jiggle it around a little bit to hide the fact that that edge is there from the piece of hemp that the butterfly sits on. But I think that is very much doable. And I guess these little pieces, if I find that the eye can still see the hemp, I can just tuck bits of tulle from that blouse in as well and that'll help soften the edges as well so I'll just grab a little bit more of that tulle and just randomly cut a piece off and maybe it can just sort of be in amongst it just to soften that whole side yeah, I think I'm liking that. Okay, so we've got our background in place. We've got some random motifs that are all different shapes and textures to sort of blend our butterfly into the background. Yeah, I think I like that. Yeah, and these, I like to frame things as well. That lace is framing, the script is framing. I'm wondering if I can add this to the edge of the panel, whether I might need a bigger, wider lace. I will probably need to check, I guess, the width of my book to this panel because the last thing I wanna do is make it too big. That, well, that's just the right length on a bit, little bit to snip off at the top and bottom. It should sort of just, I like that lineal line there. It sort of, creates an edge and if that's the spine of the book I think that'll work beautifully what can I do with this little piece oh, maybe I wonder how that would go if I tuck that under there oh it just fits okay I'm liking that I don't mind that that's a little bit open there. Like I said, it sort of gives the eye a bit of a rest up in that top corner. Yeah, I am liking that so far. I look, I might just pin a few things down and then 
I will have a little think about it and um, maybe leave it for a day and then just come back to my table and just have another little look at it to see if there's anything I want to change or doesn't quite look right. I know this sounds silly, but sometimes I close one eye and look at a piece and often you can easily see if there's a blank spot when you do that. I know that sounds a bit crazy, but um, sometimes it does work. It sort of changes your focal vision and um, it's quite interesting what you notice. So I'm just going to pin this down. A couple people have actually asked me about this uh, mat that I'm using. To be honest, I can't remember where I got it. I think I tried to get it from Amazon, but they were sold out. So then I just typed in ironing mat or wool ironing mat. And I picked it up at a random place here in Australia, just a uh, craft supply uh, quilting shop. Because I believe the quilters use them a lot to iron their fabrics on before they quilt. So I'm sorry I can't put a link in the description for all the Australian girls. But um, I think if you type in ironing mat uh, wool, you'll have them pop up and they're in various sizes. I don't think I bought the biggest, but I know it wasn't the smallest. Where's my ruler if I can see a tape measure handy? I can give you a bit of an idea of this size. And I, I love it. I've never seen them before until they appeared somewhere on a YouTube channel. And I love it because everything from pinning on it or you can just, you know, stab a pin in to hold something. You can iron on it if you want to get rid of some marks that you've made. I'm just going to pin this little bit of tulle at the top corner all scrunched up just to remind me that I want to that to be quite textured and not just a flat piece of tulle. So I've just made that a little bit messy at that top corner there instead of being flat. So everything's reasonably pinned into position. So like I said, I'll just sort of have a think, have a look at it, but I, I do like that. Being that I'm working with the red work butterfly I might um, I grabbed out the little bag I have with that journal so if I ever go somewhere on a holiday I've got just random things in here that are red um, I've made yo-yos in the past Sophic puffs that match these tones so there's four of them in there five I just spotted another one some little timber buttons so I might um, once I get this background stitch down and some lace stitch down and maybe some general um, burrow stitching to sort of bring it all together. I might then just go fossicking in this um, little bag of goodies and bring in a few Suffolk puffs or yo-yos to sort of tie it all in together. But we'll see. We will see. So that's where I will leave this video for now. I've got my background done. I've got some motifs pinned down. So I will just have a little think about it. But the more I look at it, the more I'm liking it. And I think I can embellish some more to try and make it look like it was meant to be on this panel. Okay, I shall stop the video now. And when I come back, I will be able to show you my progress. I'll see you all soon. Bye.